We're back in studio. I'm Brooke Kirchhofer alongside Mike Triplett and Nick Underhill. And this might be one of the liveliest shows we've done so far in training camp because DA had a fully indoor practice. It was the first time they had been indoors for the entire practice. And then thank you, DA, for uh, Kona Ice afterwards. Yeah, it's hotter than the devil's toenails outside. So Terrible. definitely <laughs> great to be in the indoor facility. I came off the field today and was just able to write. I wasn't feeling dizzy, didn't have to hydrate or anything. But if I hadn't been hydrated... Oh, guess what? I could have went to the hospital. I went to the Toro Hospital because they are now the sp the sponsor of our studio. A huge moment for us. We're excited to have them be part of the family. They do a ton of great stuff. They take care of you if you're sick, if your heart's going out, newborns, women's care, cancer care. They got you for everything. So go check them out if you have any types of issues. And of course, we are presented by PJ's Coffee, the best coffee in all of America. And if you're going to a PJ's, drive there in one of Matt Bauer's vehicles, go out to one of his car dealerships, he'll hook you up. Any type of car you want, they basically got it. They're located all over the Gulf South. Uh, I buy my cars from Matt, I vouch for Matt's dealerships, so go check them out. The New Orleans Not Football Show is proudly presented by PJ's Coffee. PJ's Coffee has some of the best drinks that you can find. They have locations all over the city. They have pastries and everything else you need to get your day started. So go check them out. At Toro, we were born for moments like this. From bringing new bundles of joy into the world to delivering what new mothers need to stay healthy. Born to keep hearts beating strong and to keep seniors active and healthy for years to come. Because at Toro, we deliver more than babies. From heart care to cancer care, and newborns to seniors, at Toro, we're born to care. For fast relief coffee. Mike Haas here. When the AC goes out and it's hot outside, every second counts. For over 40 years, Keefe's AC Heating and Electrical has helped thousands of families stay cool in the sizzling hot months. Keefe's Get You Cool in Three Hours or Less Guarantee is what our customers love the most. On the North or South Shore, call Keefe's. We'll get you cool in three hours or less guaranteed. Keefe's Air Conditioning and Heating. And now Electrical. For fast relief call Keefe's. Moe's Barbecue is located in Metairie. They have your game day needs taken care of. Whether you're tailgating or watching the black and gold or LSU at home with friends, Moe's has you covered. Order pulled pork, wings, ribs, sides, and more. Come in with the family for lunch and dinner as our kids' meals will please even the pickiest of eaters. Tailgating, parties at home, lunch and dinner, Moe's Barbecue will handle it all. Moe's Original Barbecue, 1101 North Causeway Boulevard between 48th and 49th Street in Metairie. Call 504-407-5333 for your catering order today. 504-407-5333. Moe's Original Barbecue in Metairie. Hard Hide Punch Tool Strawberry Whiskey is an 86-proof blend of aged wheat bourbon, American light whiskey, and fresh Punch Tool strawberries. Blended in New Orleans, it is not for the thin-skinned. Look for it in your favorite stores, bars, and restaurants. You better call Botto if you need legal help with any of the following. Car wrecks, offshore injuries, 18-wheeler collisions, Maritime and Jones Act hurricane and storm claims. You better call Botto at 504-323-7777 or 985-303-7777 for your free consultation and case review. New Orleans Stop Football is proud to be sponsored by Firehouse Subs. Make sure you check out their location on Veterans Boulevard. All right, let's get into the show. Let's get into our lead topic presented by Friend and Company Jewelers. Friend and Company Jewelers is excited to announce the opening of their new engagement salon and the Florida Lee earrings and necklaces that I have on right now are specially priced just for our NOF listeners. So be sure to go check them out. All right. And our lead topic is the fact that Andrew Dow was placed on IR. We did see him hobble off to the sideline, but Mike, he looked fine after that. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised by the diagnosis um, because he walked back to the locker room under his own power. But obviously uh, Dennis Allen did say it was a knee injury. They evaluated it afterward, quickly put him on IR. It, it, it's obviously something they didn't think he was going to come back from quick. And um there's a lot of competition at the linebacker position, but Andrew Dahl's a guy who's made this team the last yeah. two years as a core special teams player. So this is the the most significant and disappointing injury at camp so far, no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, look, he, he's he's been a core special team teamer, like you said. It's it's a hit in that regard. 
they need to be good on special teams. It's an emphasis this offseason. They got punter competition. They got kicker competition. They got competition at gunner. Like this is a guy though that that's kind of quarter that whole group. It, it is a hit. And some people are gonna whistle past it, but I, I don't think the Saints are. I think they're feeling this one a little bit. So it is something that they got to figure out. They got to figure out how to replace it. It's going to open up a spot for someone else to make the team. And it's also a little bit of a hit to their mm -hmm. linebacker depth. I don't know that you're counting on Dow to be someone that plays actual snaps during the season, but he is solid depth in the, you know, in, in case of an emergency, we've seen him come in and make some plays. He was active in training camp. It, it's a hit. It's a hit all the way around the board. Yeah, it's a big guy in the locker room, too. I know we get into that, you know, Demario Davis, some of the guys that bring the juice on the defense. Andrew Dowell has been one of those guys. He's always been good to us in the media. We actually just talked to him, unfortunately, just a couple of days ago. And, you know, this every year, I think we're all kind of rooting for him because he's the hype beast, the camp beast every single year. And he just hasn't been able to solidify like Kate Nellis did last last season, that third linebacker spot. Special teams was kind of his home. Who knows if that would have changed, but man, this is it's brutal. And it, it takes away depth now at linebacker, which has been an issue. It has, although I think they're starting to get some players there. Like Nephi Sewell is, is someone that I think he's, I don't think there's any question. He's the top guy behind. The, he made the, a big play today too. He made he's multiple big plays yeah. today. Yeah. He's on the regular. He, he was, he forced the fumble. Yeah. He had a, a, a really good run stuff where he went over to the sideline He's a baller, and I thought he was someone that was going to make the team last year. He ended up on the practice squad, but I think without a doubt, he is he's the guy. Like I'm, I have that in pen right now. I don't think there's anybody even. I think it's him, and then there's everybody else underneath him. So he's the barrier behind Demario and Pete Warner. Um, so I think they're okay there. Connolly's playing well. Demarco Jackson it feels like he's kind of coming back a little bit after being down. They're kind of looking at him a little bit earlier in these rotations the last couple of days. So. There's some there's some options there. I don't think the the Dow situation is a huge hit in terms of that because I don't think you're looking at him as, as an answer. But some of that is starting to come together a little bit. I think they really like Zach Bond too. Well, this I think opens the door even more for Zach Bond uh, because mm -hmm. he was probably right next to Dowell as a core special teams player. So he is now one of the more more experienced special teams guys. And I'm trying to remember I had the list before when we were doing the 53 man episode. They did not keep Dwayne Washington. Um, now they won't have Andrew Dowell back. Um, so it's like JT Gray and then almost like Zach Bond, I think, in special team snaps from, from years past. Um, so, so yeah, that's another path for him. And DeMarco Jackson, what's interesting, I agree that Nephi Sewell has stood out more for his playmaking. DeMarco Jackson has been pretty entrenched as the number two Mike linebacker, I think, almost every practice. Mm -hmm. It's not a position where they're opening it up Nephi's to a got wide some looks, sir. competition. But, I mean, DeMarco gets in with the twos a lot. So they're at least trying to to let him have that opportunity to win yeah, that Yeah, look, job. it's it's interesting, though, because I don't know that the Mike linebacker is the guy. I don't think that gets you on. I think being yeah. the will gets you on because if yeah. DeMario goes down, Pete Warner's sliding over, and then yep. Nephi's going in a yep. will. So exactly. if you are just strictly middle linebacker, you are probably further down the depth chart than, than maybe the next guy. Yeah, and on, on, along the lines of injuries, there were five guys missing today. One of those was injury-related. Scott Lashley was waived, but the Saints did sign – Two veteran guards. That's a good sign, especially what we've seen at the beginning of camp. The other four guys that were missing uh, were three of them were vet days. Jimmy Graham, Bradley Roby, Ryan Ramchek, And then, of course, Alvin Kamara, as Dennis Allen kind of mentioned to us in the previous practice that he would not be at practice because he would be in New York going to meet with the NFL commissioner. So that's our moment of the day presented by New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Is Alvin getting ahead of this and going to actually meet with the commissioner going to help the suspension? I don't know. I mean, it, it probably can't hurt. I, I don't know that they're going to make it as obvious as you came and, and, you know, you came into the office because then every player who ever is facing a suspension will be like, oh, I'm going to do that too. But, but obviously Alvin wants to tell his side of the story. Um, if you just look at the video, it looks bad. If he explains what somebody said to him, who he was defending, why he did it, why it was out of character, that can only help. Um, I figured there would probably be an, a, a suspension and then an appeal hearing and then it gets reduced or whatever. But, but any, you know, it's all good being proactive. Look, the thing about Alvin Kamara being the person in this situation is he has a pretty impeccable mm -hmm. track record of being a face of the team, a face of the league. Um, and and this was out of character from what we know of Alvin Kamara. So I think him going and explaining to the commissioner why this happened and why it won't happen again can only help. This is a tough statement to make considering that he has to go there and, and plead a case to, you know, basically the his boss. Like, I guess Rogers, everybody's boss for mm -hmm. getting into a fight away from work that put a, you know, a little bit of a black eye on his employer. Like, 
So it's tough for me to say this in the context of that, but Alvin is one of the smartest people I've ever met in any walk of life. Like, I think he's just incredibly intelligent. The way he speaks is just incredibly intelligent. If you have to go in there and plead a case, I think Alvin's going to do well to represent himself in this situation. So I don't know if it'll help, but it's certainly a step towards doing something to help yourself. And I, I think he's going to go in there. I think he's pleading this case. He'll probably impress Roger. He's probably going to gonna be able to express remorse in the situation, which is going to allow Roger to look at it and say, okay, he gets it. He understands. He actually meant what he's saying, assuming Alvin does. And I assume Alvin does, which is really all they, they want to be able to say. Roger wants to be able to put out a statement. Hey, I met with Alvin Kamara. He, he regretted it. He's taking steps. He's doing this. He's doing that. And it, it's going to be settled. And it's going to be this amount of games. I spent the day like kind of, you know, just texting people, league, other teams, people around the NFL, how many games do you think he's going to get? I heard two games. I heard three. I heard four. Nobody went over the number four. So yeah. that kind of seems to be the ceiling on the situation. I, I think six is out the window. I would be shocked if he gets six games at this point. And that was kind of what it, it was going to be before he settled the case. But look, I, I think Alvin going in there is 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 smart. I think it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an incredibly intelligent move. And I think it's, it's proactive. It's him going and kind of getting in front of the person that's going to decide the fate of this and saying... Hey, I effed up. Like, I get it. It's not going to happen again. And he is a, the right person to speak for for Alvin Kamara. To me, there's another side to this. The fact that Roger even took the meeting. This yep. is something we don't typically hear about or see, or maybe it doesn't even make it to Roger. It makes it to maybe his assistant's well, yeah, desk. Yeah, because they've also, I mean, he is going to meet with the commissioner, did did already probably by this by the time we're recording this. But, um, you know, they've changed the, the policy in recent years to where Roger isn't sole judge, jury, and executioner mm -hmm. anymore. Um, so I'm sure they'll pass on these words, but it will be others as, as well being involved in the decision well, process and not just him, but yeah, I think, if we, know, I think we if, know where the buck stops. I yeah. think if Roger says, Hey, I want this guy to get yeah. three games, he's getting yeah. three games. Yeah. yeah. But it is still, a, I think important part of this that Roger Absolutely. actually took the meeting yeah. and it's during training camp too. The fact that this is an excused absence for Alvin Kamara, not that he's one of those guys that needs to prove anything in camp. And so with that, did we learn anything new about Kendra Miller or Jamal Williams in this practice? I think we've just been learning new things about Kendra every single day through these practices. And, and yeah, they, they got a little bit more work today. I don't know that we learned more about him because it felt like the defense was kind of yeah. dominating oh, yeah. the day overall. But I'm 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 I've been writing about it almost every day. Like I'm extremely impressed by Kendra Miller. I think he he runs well. You know, we talked about it coming into it. Like when a team brings in a rookie running back that actually is good, it, you just kind of see that burst and it's kind of rejuvenating to the whole offense. And it's just like you see him hit a hole and you're like, wow. And it's just, it's so fresh. And that's what you see with him. And I, I'm very, very encouraged by him. You know, given the nature of the position, I think you see him more. It's more, it's easier to see what he's doing, you know, compared to Brian Brzee or Isaiah Foskey, because when he makes a good play, it's out in space and yeah. you have to notice it. Brzee and Foskey could be doing incredible <laughs> things, especially Brzee being on the inside. It's yeah. just very hard to see sometimes what they're doing there because it's not isolated. So, Kendra is standing out more than I think any of the rookies, but it's it's probably the yeah. nature of the position. But I think he's really good. Today was a uh, third down install, so there was a little bit more blitz pickup stuff. I'm going to be interested to hear kind of some of the reviews from people with the team once they go back and review that film, because I think that's the biggest hurdle for him just as far as, you know, how many snaps he's going to get this season. Yeah, well, the other reason that running backs stand out is because every run goes like it might have been a one yard loss but in training camp it's a 60 yard yeah. run like like yeah. you never know if they were actually tackled twice because nobody's tackling them to the ground but no you're right but look even among the running backs he has stood out i mean we 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 notice him more and the main thing we noticed about him is when they drafted him i was like well this guy you know they said they had a vision for him as a pass catcher but it was not something he had done much in college he looks really smooth as a pass catcher so um, them saying they have a vision for it, they're backing that up. This dude has skis for feet too. I don't yeah. know if you guys noticed it. Like if if you ever look at a picture of him, like his feet are just. I asked him about it, and he said it helps him balance, and that's why he's so good at breaking tackles because he gets like such a strong plant. Mm -hmm. I was looking at his feet, like man, people are like going to be able to tackle him by these, but he says they're they're a strength of his game, so it's it's crazy. But those things are are crazy. Dennis Allen even mentioned that the other day that his control and balance is something that. Yep. We asked Dennis Allen all the time, evaluate these players. We want to get his opinion. It's never a, a major glowing review. It was a glowing review of Kendra Miller the other day. But let's stick with the offense. Who popped today gets into our Martin and Spirits question of the day. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a wide selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and more. Alonzo asks, what wide receivers do you guys seeing making the see making the roster 
and the practice squad. So we probably both got Mike, Alave, and Shahid. Yeah. <laughs> Brooke, you got the same three? Yeah. You got those three on your list? Do we all have A.T. Perry? Mm. Yeah, I mean, probably, but uh, the answer to this question, how many do they keep, is whether they decide he's going to actively participate on this team or be, quote-unquote, a red shirt using up. Yeah. A.T., yes or no? I, I think he makes the roster, but I don't know that he's – I don't have him in my top four – I think it could be one of those inact healthy and active kind so of deals. So on the yeah. team, not yeah. necessarily contributing. You have him on the team? I think Traquan's outperforming him so far in camp. So I have Traquan above him. Traquan is my number four on my, my list. Well. I have Traquan on the team. Everybody wanted him gone. I think you see all the new toys and you start yeah. thinking, is this guy going to replace him? Is that guy going to re replace him? OTA's mini camp. you're doing the same thing. And then you get out here and you're just like, he's making more plays making than all plays. these other guys. Yeah. yeah. And that's what he does every year. And he survives. And then the fans are going to be pissed off about it. Because they want the new toy, but like Trey Quan's the barrier and nobody's overcome it. And somebody else that probably annoys the hell out of the fans too that I would put behind him. So my five are, are the Mike Alave, Shahid, Trey Quan, A.T. Perry. And if we were going to six, it would be Keith Kirkwood. Like he's just <laughs> he's just that guy. We were talking about Keith him the other Kirkwood. day. I like he looks now we talked about this before. We talked about this on the who's gonna stand out in OTA's episode that the person who's been there always stands out. So there might be some yeah. of that. But yeah, you watch like 11 receivers take turns. And every time I'm like, oh, the guy who looks like the polished pro <laughs> is Keith Kirkwood. Not dynamic. You know, he's not making the play of the day ever, but he's just, he does everything right. That's why he yeah. keeps coming back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I want, I wanted it to be Brian Edwards. I wanted him to pop. I kind of have some concerns about where his head's at. If we were going to the practice squad, the two guys I would have on there would be uh, uh, Washington and Kirkwood. And that would that would be the, the group of guys. You're forgetting your guy. I'm very surprised by this. Who's Kiki Kuti. Kute. I mean, he's made plays. He's he's probably yeah. he's he's in the mix. If we're going on who's been right. making plays so far, yeah. what is it? What are we, seven uh, you, days in? You guys have listed all the names I have written down. I, I, and I've got a few thoughts on, on all of them, but but I agree. Like I would if I'm doing my 53 man roster projection, I'm probably gonna stop at five. Six is a lot. Mm -hmm. They've done six before. But usually they do six when one of them is playing special teams, like Deontay Harris or something like that. Right. If if uh, I guess Rashid Shahid's a kick returner, but um, six is a lot. They they don't play six. Nobody's on game nobody's day. forcing the conversation a six yet. I do. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I think that's important but too. Kirkwood, I haven't listened. Kuti, definitely ahead of. I mean, the one guy that that really needs to get it together, and you mentioned it in your observations today, is is Lynn Bowden Jr. is is struggling out there. I mean, it, he's getting noticed for the wrong reasons out there. He could be gone any day, like, yeah, honestly. Like, exactly. I hate to say that. Um, Brian Edwards, yeah. Um, I don't think Brian Edwards is necessarily struggling. He, he had tough one-on-ones today. But I just think two other guys are standing out, and, and the two guys I was going to go more in-depth on are Traquan Smith. First of all, we talked to Traquan today. and. Yeah. There is not an interview I like more because I just feel like there's like a truth serum with him. Whatever it is about Trayvon Smith, he feels completely comfortable telling you exactly what he is thinking. And yeah. He's not cocky, but he was open about why he feels comfortable. There's the three reasons why Trayvon Smith always makes his team. One is the blocking. And he kind of smiled kind of sheepishly and he said they were watching in the receiver room a clip file of how to block as a receiver, showing the young guy, showing everything. And he left and he goes, every other clip was of me. <laughs> And he said he was kind of getting like embarrassed in the room. Um, proud too, I'm sure. Um, the other thing is he um, he knows this offense so well. That that wasn't always the case with him. But he said, doesn't care if it's X, doesn't care if it's Y, doesn't care if it's Z. Put him in. He knows them all. He said, I think I could actually play quarterback for this team. He goes, I might not know how to call <laughs> out the protections. The throws might not be good. But I know the offense that well now. And, and he's even... Um, increasing what he's doing on special teams he's not he's not afraid to do that so that's how you become the fourth mm -hmm. receiver on those teams those three areas you got to play all three positions you got to be able to block you got to be able to play special teams and i don't see anybody taking those things away from trey con smith although james washington um i thought of him as sort of a deep threat guy who was a little redundant with chris olave and rashid Shahid, but i did not realize until i studied him a little more and we talked to him the other day he is brit he is his like chest Looks like a refrigerator. He's like he's 5'11", 213, and the very first thing he says, I like to do the dirty work. I like to be a physical receiver. And he, too, has been a blocking specialist throughout a career that is now in year six for him. So I think he has had a Traquan Smith-style career. I think he would be Traquan's biggest competition to steal that role away from him. Look, one point, too, that uh, on the blocking – I've been talking to people inside the building. They actually think Chris Olave is going to be a factor in run blocking really? this year, which he wasn't at all last year, almost to the point that you wanted to take him off the field. 
they think that he's going to that he's, yeah, he he's wasn't able to bully that. people on the field by any means coming into the league too it was it was even an effort thing at times like it but they actually think that he's he's going to he's going to contribute there. So I think that's, that's huge. And that's a factor yeah. in this, in putting together this step chart, but you're right. That's not my guy. Kiki, Kiki's made a lot of <laughs> yeah. plays. He's, he's looked good. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see Chris in, you know, as we continue to get along in practice, it's kind of hard to, he hasn't been put in a situation yet to where he's had to bully somebody off a ball. He's just so fast and his cuts are yeah. so crisp that he doesn't have to really be that physical with defenders. Maybe later on in camp, we'll actually see that. Maybe we're not seeing something that the coaches are seeing because he did, Add on size, but yeah, Traquan Smith to me, no one has beaten him out yet. So based on what we've seen through, this is an early projection. You, your fifth. you get, you got Mike, you got Alave, you got Shahid, you got Traquan, and you got AT is your fifth. You taking a fifth? You got I'm Washington only, Kirkwood. I'm taking AT fifth because I think you keep four tight ends this year, and that was going to be my next question to you guys. There's no way you're cutting Jimmy Graham, so you're going to keep four tight ends, and I would is that presumably then everybody would keep five on their 53 man roster. Five receivers, four tight ends is not unusual. Yeah, I, I I don't think that that makes sense. Um, I don't know that you're definitely choosing one or the other. Um, you know, it could come down to linebacker and safety and everything like that too. But yeah, four tight ends is a heavy amount of tight ends. But they obviously signed Jimmy Graham with the idea that the exact opposite of everything I just said about Traquan Smith. Jimmy Graham is basically going to do one thing. Yeah. Like he's going to catch passes, maybe. 20 snaps a game. He's not going to play special teams. Uh, he's not going to do a lot of blocking. So if Jimmy Graham makes the team, you said he's not going to get cut. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's going to get cut, but I don't, I don't know that he's guaranteed to make the roster. But if he makes the team, he's making the team in a role that is about 20 total snaps max a game probably. So that does take a position away from someone else. I had more doubts about him starting to now. You know what I mean? Like when he came in, I was like, I don't know if he's going to make the team. And as we've seen him play, I'm like, he's probably – He's probably going to make the team. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I think yeah. he's looked good so far. He's made plays. He's catching the ball. He's he's doing exactly when they sign him. It's like, well, maybe he can help him in short yardage situations in the red zone. And like he's making those types of plays out there. I I like where he's at. I think he adds something to that room. I would have more confidence in throwing a pass to Jimmy right now than anybody other than Juwan Johnson. I mean, I, I think although he's, Foster Moreau's been one of the most, I, I, I'm throwing the ball to Jimmy before yeah, Foster. No, I agree. With I that. mean, I I, agree I, with that, I think. Yeah. I think he has a chance to, I don't know if it's going to be 20 snaps a game though. Like it might be 10, you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? It's like, like yeah. very, very specific, but I think he's yeah. going to have a very just specific detailed role. He's going to go out, he's going to execute it. And, you know, assuming he keeps doing what we're seeing, he's probably yeah. going to have an impact this season. And, and an impact might be 230 yards and four touchdowns, yeah. but that would be great <laughs> yeah. for a million dollars. It's, it's fascinating though. You don't see teams do that that often. If you play 10 snaps on offense, then you play 20 on special teams. Mm -hmm. Usually Dwayne Washington or something like that. Um, um, Adam Prentice or something like that. It, it'd be, I mean, it says a lot for a very specific vi vision that they have for Jimmy Graham. Red and zone, red zone specialist is damn, damn near a special teams role <laughs> yeah. though. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, if you're that good at something, I, yeah. and I think Jimmy, yeah. just if you can isolate it and that's all he does. Look, there's dudes on the team every week that are inactive. You know what I mean? You have yeah. these, these practice squad elevations that you can have a certain type of player. That's only going to do, it's no different than if you have like JT gray as a gunner, like, I think it's smart if you can find someone yep. that's just elite at one thing and just say, go do this and don't yep. be asked at anything else and, and just let them do that one thing they're great at. Well, we've got our money segment on deck with the defense feature. The competition between Michael Thomas and Marshawn Lattimore is ramping up after day seven. We'll have all of that coming up right after this. Now at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company, get our 1099 shrimp rumalog combos with zesty shrimp rumalog and fried shrimp or catfish for only 1099. And did you hear? Soft shelled crabs are back at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Life is full of unexpected events, which can come with unplanned expenses. Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union has a variety of personal loan products to meet your needs. Whether it's treating yourself to something new, paying off an unexpected expense, or consolidating debt, we are here to help. With rates as low as 8.5% APR, a personal loan with Jefferson Financial can help. Don't let life's curveball impact your financial happiness. Apply today at jeffersonfinancial.org. Membership restrictions apply. Federally insured by NCUA. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and much, much more. They are family owned and operated since 1946 and specialize in wine, spirits, gourmet food, gift baskets, catering, and tasting events. 
They have many locations, so they're never too far away. You can check them out in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, and Baton Rouge. Or if it's more convenient, you can always shop online. Whether you're a wine novice or a seasoned collector, you'll enjoy the Martin Wine and Spirit experience. Turn up the heat with new games from the lottery. For a sizzling start, play Hot 8. Win up to $8,000. Twist your way to winnings with Cherry Twist. Win up to $18,000. It's not your parents' crossword. Play Crossword Explosion. Win up to $30,000. Bigger, better, top prizes. Play $250,000 money bags. Top prize on this game, a whopping $250,000. Enjoy all four hot new games from the lottery. Welcome back to the Turo Hospital Studio. We get into our money segment presented by Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union. The defense was money today. That's it. Plain and simple. Absolutely. Best best day of camp for them by far. And they needed one. They hadn't yep. dominated a, a practice yet, but they came out and they they just smoked the offense today. <laughs> and you kind of saw the range and you saw the the dynamic playmaking. Nephi Sewell, uh, Demario Davis had a play in the flat where he, he's just kind of killed a run. <laughs> Just very, very quickly. And those are the plays you want to see from him. And, and you don't need to see it every single day, but you need to see it. Okay, Bill Parcells. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, but like, it's just, Demario barely hit this guy and he went flying. Yeah. It's no. just like a good reminder. Demario is don't a monster. get in his way. Yeah, but it's just, okay, he can he can still do that. That's fine. Check it off the list. Pete Werner was involved in, in yeah. some stuff. They look good overall. Uh, first time the offense has struggled, and I think it was enforced on them. I saw a lot of stuff like, well, the offense wasn't executing. Well, the offense wasn't executing because the defense was executing. It wasn't yeah. It wasn't a fa failure. Derek Carr was held to four of eight passing. It was the first time we kind of saw him have some issues in camp, Just, but it was good issues. You see the defense balling, and, and I needed to see that. I've seen enough from the offense at this point. Yeah, he had, that's he had a good to go point. back to the, the tight ends from Tuesday, right. from tight end Tuesday <laughs> to get back on track. He had to throw to the tight ends again. But it's a good point that you bring that up. Somebody's got to win the day. It's okay if the offense has a bad day in the D. I mean, as long as it's going back and forth, then we see improvement from both sides. Now we're not trying to say, oh, the offense is bad. Like no. everybody in the comment. No, like the defense won today. It was a good sign. And maybe the offense will step up when they're back in practice there in two a, days. There's a practice in 18 where Breeze got picked off four times in one practice. Like it, it happens. <laughs> it like happens. sometimes, yeah, when you have a good team, sometimes the other side of the ball is going to win. And like I said, we needed to see it from the defense. I think they've been good and effective yeah. all throughout camp. The pass rush has been probably a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. We only got three days in pads, so like keep it in context. But I think we've seen the signs we needed to see, but it was just kind of like a really cohesive performance. I think probably getting indoors and not, you know, being in sweltering hell heat probably helps <laughs> a little bit with ramping up the intensity on that side of the ball. So it, it was just a, it was a good practice. It was a good thing to see. I think that practice you're referencing was the one where Drew Brees compared Marcus Williams to Ed Reed afterward, Ooh. and then we all got killed in the media for blowing up Marcus Williams. He's done pretty good, though. Marcus yeah. Williams is one of the best safeties <laughs> in the NFL, man. Like he's he missed, okay. he missed, yeah. he he's missed great. One, no, he he's missed great. one tackle. Like you know, yeah. I know it ruined a lot of people's lives. I I understand it, but it was just one play. He was really good outside of that one play. Um, no, I agree on the defense having a really good day. I mean, it started in one on ones and it didn't really stop. One on ones. I don't. I don't. I don't know if this is the time to talk about it. I can't remember what's left on the run sheet, but it was Anthony Johnson day too for. For the defense and uh nick quickly tweeted out the one thing i knew my number one observation was at practices nick nick's about to announce anthony johnson again he was the first one on him look gave up on him for a minute just because he had his leg in a cast we can go back but he's to, back now we can go back to the dark horse <laughs> show anthony johnson would be my dark horse if he did not have an i'm just saying you me. abandoned him but so i went to orgy. but i watched one-on-ones and right away i was like nick will be back on anthony johnson. <laughs> he dominated one-on-ones and then happenstance because Bradley Roby had the day off and Elante Taylor left early during uh, team drills. Anthony Johnson stayed in with the twos and the threes, got a ton of snaps lined up against Chris Olave lined up against Michael Thomas. Didn't necessarily win those battles, but held his own uh, and, and almost made a great play to keep the ball away from Olave, but stopped the play immediately. Of after course, Mike got a bounce on a back yeah. shoulder play. So I mean, he, he, uh, he brought it today. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we already on our 53 man roster predictions were like, trying to get 12, 13 DBs on the roster without him, uh, it's by far the most competitive group on the team. He probably, I mean, he probably doesn't end up making the team. It's just right. uh, it's just such a tough position. You, you'd be wiser to pick a, an Anthony Orgy or somebody else. But look, DA knows how to find mm -hmm. long press cornerbacks. He's a long press cornerback. So there's traits there. He moves well. He played well. See how he does in the preseason. I mean, it's still kind of early. Maybe you're learning people now and you're able to cheat a little bit. I mean, you kind of see that sometimes and you need to get into these 
joint practices to get factor fiction on some of these UDFAs, but he's uh, he, he looks good. I, I like what we see from him. Yeah, we got a long look at the twos and threes today. I think it's finally, well, you know what? You could tell me this. We're seven days in. Is it typically this early in camp that we're getting heavy looks at twos and threes? I mean, it, it, they got to find out what they have with everybody. Yeah. And we do see some rotating in. And I think that's been interesting throughout camp. Like you'll see, the, especially on the defense, like they'll have the defense roti- rotating in the twos and threes while the offensive starters are still on the field. I don't know that we've ever seen that before, just in general, in, in the way they're doing it. You'll look up and Derek Carr will still be out there and it'll be Nephi Sewell and DeMarco Jackson at linebacker and Lonnie Johnson and Jonathan yep. Abram at, at cornerback. And then, you know, whoever, Yadam and Anthony Johnson at, at at the cornerback spot, I'm sorry, Abram and, and Lonnie Johnson at safety. But I don't know that we've ever seen that. It's usually pretty static the way they do it. That's something that's kind of popped out to me overall. But I think that's smart, too. You get people used to playing with one another and maybe learning more people. And then if there is an injury or if you are getting deeper into your personnel, it's not a shock to the system when these guys go in there. They know how to communicate with one another. But I, I've, I have found that fascinating. Maybe yeah. it helps with the offense, too. Something we need to ask the DA. Maybe getting Carr... And the wide receivers more looks at, at different people doesn't allow you to settle into these habits where maybe you're just kind of like, well, I know how he, you know, guards against this break so I can set him up and win every single time. Maybe it helps with some of that stuff too, but it, it has been fascinating to see how they've been kind of doing that mm-hmm. on defense. Yeah, no, that rotate. And I think it has to do with that competition thing that I keep bringing up because they're doing that within the offensive line, they mid drill, the line, they're, yeah. they're, they're moving guys from tackle to guard mid-series they're moving guys from left guard to right guard mid-series um we're, we're seeing yeah from sometimes mid-series brazil and then um uh Sh- brazilian shepherd or colin saunders and uh and malcolm roach and i mean they're doing it all over the field it's something that is absolutely noticeable on the practice field one thing about the defense we've kind of heard this from several guys on both sides of the ball throughout camp is that this defensive line seems more explosive to them how is that how can that help in terms of where the defense was last year, and they kind of fell off as far as production. How can them being now explosive off the line help them get back to that top five defense in a lot of categories? Well, A, it damn well better, because that's why they (laughs) used all their resources this offseason, bringing in Colin Saunders, Shepard, drafting Brzee, getting Foskey, like all these things that they did, they better be better there, because if they aren't, they're they're not going to be a good team. They aren't going where they want to go. So yeah, but I think we see it. I mean, like Colin Saunders is, is more athletic than you would yeah. expect. Like he moves well, he gets after it. Uh, I think Roach is playing better than we've seen him play. And, you know, I think he just keeps getting better and better and better, which we've seen. And this year's another step towards that. Brzee's faster than, I don't know, may, I don't know if it's faster than expected, but he's fast. Like yeah. we see it. He's out there. He's making faster plays. Faster than someone who normally yeah. plays this position, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Faster than what they had last year at that spot. So I think it's a little bit rejuvenated. Is it going to be rejuvenated enough? You know, I think that that's to be determined, but I, you know, they, they should be faster, more explosive in, in all those things. It, it's absolutely by design, too. And I'm going to spoil a story I've been working on for the future because I, you know, still want to talk to more people about it, including DA. But um, Malcolm Roach, when I was looking at him, he clearly looks different. And yeah. he, he, he didn't say exactly how big he got the last couple of years, but he said he is down to as low as he's been since his rookie year. By design, because when they brought in Todd Grantham, they announced to them, we are going to be an attacking, aggressive style defense, a noticeable change. I was talking to Eric McCoy about it. I talked to Todd Grantham about it. Like they decided to overhaul their style of defensive line play. They are not going to sit back, which, and obviously everybody would think, why would anyone sit back? It is, it is common practice in the NFL to often sit back. So you don't lose your, your run gap integrity. They want to attack every gap and and prove that they can still be disciplined enough to do that. But it's by design that they brought in faster, more athletic guys, that they asked some of their incumbents to lose weight to be faster, more athletic. And that is something that it's part of the reason DA brought Todd Grantham in. But when he brought him in, they decided this is going to be a new attacking style of defensive line. Eric McCoy said he he, he was like, no, you are at like they have absolutely done that. He's like, I'm feeling guys on my shoulder that I didn't used to feel in the past. Um, and, and it's, it's, you know, their run defense kind of surprised me because their run defense was their bread and butter from 2017 to 2021. It's something they did better than any team in the league. It, it could be the main reason you could say why Dennis Allen became a head coach. He established this great defensive front, but they recognized that it dropped off last year and, and credit to them for aggressively trying to change it. Yeah. Look, part of that too, though, it, it is a chicken and egg, you know, like they're really good at run defense and 
one of the reasons they were so much worse at run defense last year is because they had a bad offense too. And you aren't scoring a lot of points. You aren't getting leads teams, you know, just it, it's, it's teams run more. And when you run more, mm-hmm. you're going to give up more plays, but definitely ineffective though, overall, like it's just those rankings in the league sometimes are a little bit yeah. misleading. You know, but it wasn't sometimes. just yardage. It was the yeah. naked eye too. Yeah. They were, no, they were great. Last year. They were great. No, and they were horrible last year. <laughs> yeah. But it's fascinating to me too. Like, I think you just see it on the field. Like you see guys making plays from the edge out towards the sideline. Like they're, they're getting after it. There's just a little bit more juice to that group overall. It, and it pops. It's something you see. It's obvious. Like you're out there and you're just like, wow, they're, they're a little bit different than they were last year. Not overwhelming by any means. Like, I don't want to like turn it into a hype yeah. thing. It was just, it was stale and it's no longer stale anymore. Now look, we could be having a conversation when they have the number 20 run defense, four weeks, they haven't adjusted well to their new plan. They're, you know, they're yeah. losing, they're losing gap integrity because mm-hmm. uh, they haven't adjusted to their new. We're style. just talking about athleticism, but, but yeah, and speed. Th- we talked how many times in OTAs and minicamp. What do you want to see out at the next practice? And I was like, I'd like to watch <laughs> Brzee and Fosky and Peyton Turner. Now that we are seeing them in pads these last three days, I can't take my eyes off Brzee and Peyton Turner. They're not winning every time, but they move different. Like there's a reason why they are two first round picks. Um, I love seeing it from Peyton Turner, just getting to see it every day and not in and out of the lineup. It doesn't mean it's going to be effective. And and sometimes, you know, like I used to say all the time, Will Smith is a Saints Hall of Famer because he didn't mess around with anything other than just powering right into the offensive tackle. And it was effective. These guys move. They try to do rip moves. They try to slide around. They try to use, you know, s- mm-hmm. slippery ways to get inside, but it's mesmerizing to watch it. And it's often very effective and be on the lookout on new Orleans dot football for that story. Once you put it out there, <laughs> another fascinating topic. I think this is now the second or third time we've talked about it. The Michael Thomas, Marshawn Lattimore battle and Marshawn won that battle today. But one thing that was interesting to me is so they did three reps Uh, against each other during one-on-ones and in two of the reps after Michael Thomas wasn't really happy about where the ball was placed before the play happened it was understood that it was going to be in one spot and it wasn't or it was too low or underthrown on another one he was pretty vocal about it but we actually had a chance to talk to Derek Carr after two and it seems like that's not that's a non-issue that the two of them are communicating this just is a part of the getting to know each other and figuring out where each other want the ball and also Mike is still not he might say he's 100% and working at 100%, but he is still integrating himself back into the old Michael Thomas. Can they get there by the start of the season? Yeah, I mean, that's what this time of year is before. I think the other thing that happened today is we were indoors and we were packed into a tight window where we were right up close yeah. next to the players. Mike, If Mike has ever had a pass that he did not complete or, or was batted away from him, uh, I guarantee you he he yelled out something that made him mad about that too. We know how intense it, and fire he is. But but yeah, they're they're trying to get that going. I mean, in team drills today, I think it almost looked like they were forcing it a couple of times, yeah. like to to get them going. But it was just two days ago when everybody was talking about how he looked like the Mike of old and he he probably had more highlights than any other player. I'm not really worried about it. I mean, like that that we haven't like charted him as the guy catching every pass and beating Marshawn Lattimore every time. Be, it'd be a worry if Marshawn yeah, Lattimore gonna, wasn't right. dominant. You're not going to beat Marshawn um, every time. But yeah, they, it's a reminder that they it's a new quarterback and receiver that have never actually worked with each other until a week ago, um, and that Mike is is shaking some rust off. But but he looks good. He's coming in and out of his breaks good. He's got a great head start. Yeah. He's dominating over the middle, too. Yeah. I mean, which is, if that's all Mike does all year, you're fine. Like, he, he can just run that stuff. The, the crossers, the slants, the hitches. Like, if he can do all that, he's fine. We've seen that. Like, where there's been more issues has really been down the field. Like, that's kind of some of the stuff. And on, on one of the plays Brooke mentioned, it, it was a one-on-one, and, and Mike's going up the sideline, and he's looking for a back shoulder throw, and Carr's trying to kind of lead him back towards off the sideline. And Mike, to his credit, like, shook off Marshawn and got there, but, like, yeah. he's going down the ball. hits him. He doesn't complete the catch. Probably should have made the play. But if you – want to be a, a well-executed team, the quarterback and the wide receiver need to see things the same way. Now, Mike was the one to speak on it. It doesn't necessarily mean what Mike said is the absolute way it should be, but Mike was expecting one thing, Carr was doing another, and they just got to figure that out. So the only way to figure that out is to go through it and mess up and go back and correct it and have the film and have the conversation. you rather have it happen on August 2nd and practice yeah. in a one-on-one than in September in a game. So I view it as a good thing. Like These are good learning moments. It's cool and fascinating to see him. And it was just, you know, an inside look at it. And 
you know, we know why it didn't work because we were packed in there. So we have a more informed conversation. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just stuff that's going to happen. It, it's a good thing because we are, are we seven practices? Seven in? practices. Seven days, six practices, seven practices. Seven practices. And Michael yeah. Thomas has been catching passes from Derek Carr in every one of them. Like, you know, we wanted to make sure he's going to be there on day one. We wanted to make sure he's going to be full go. He, he The amount of reps he's getting is, is a good thing. I like how you put it in inside look because we were, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they're right here. If I reached out car at one point, he told us to back was, up was saying, <laughs> and everybody's like, what is he doing? And it was like, Oh, oh he's talking to way. us. The media yeah. was too close. Cause he was about to start throwing yeah. passes to our sideline. Personally for me, I love being up close to that and seeing kind of the back and forth oh, yeah. between Marshawn and Michael Thomas. We're not saying like the guy was complaining. Like this is a true, like competitive oh. nature guy going up against somebody that not only is his teammate, his brother, somebody he likes to be around his friend, but he's like, Absolutely not. Like Marshawn, I'm coming for you every single time. And I loved that the two of them kept going after each other. It wasn't like Marshawn went against another receiver. Or Michael Thomas went up against another guy. It was those two every one-on-one. -on -one. And it, I don't think it's been like that every day. Sometimes Michael Thomas will go up against somebody else, but it, they haven't been paired like that yep. one after the other. Marshawn pulled a hamstring the last time he did this. He went, he went against Traquan. Traquan caught it. He yeah. put, like had a little hamstring thing. They went and shut him out. He came back. So Mike didn't go against him. I don't think. The last time they 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 did one on ones at all, but yeah, those that's the look Mike needs. Like give yeah. Mike the hardest look possible because if he can adjust to playing against Marshawn and Marshawn's practicing at an absolute elite level right now, if he can adjust to it and make plays against him, everything else is easy after that. And Michael Thomas wants that. Oh, he, he wants does. to go up against yeah. the best. What did he say? Did he say good on good the other day? Because we oh, always yeah. say best on best, but yeah. when. Somebody brought up Marshall Nottomore. He's like, listen to the question. He goes, yeah, good on good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's no question. They've been doing it for a lot longer. Back to Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, it's so funny. We always talk about like, oh, Drew Brees and Jonathan Vilman practice, and it feels like a friendly rivalry. They're friends. <laughs> but I, I think I even asked him in the follow. It's kind of like when you go up against your like brother, like yeah. there's no one you want to beat more. Like I guarantee you, <laughs> he's not like, Oh, you got me that time. I'm sure he's steaming. Oh, if, yeah. he, if he doesn't, yeah. they're not talking to each other in the locker room. <laughs> that's for sure. All right. Last thing. Give me your best thing you saw today. Well, I, for me, it was a back shoulder catch that AT Perry had from uh Jay Kaner at quarterback defense dominated the day, but that was the one play where in my notebook, I wrote like seven exclamation points behind it. Cause it was just like, that was, that's how I felt when I saw it. And that was, that was my play today, and a good moment for At Perry. I think he's kind of had a quiet camp, and that was that was a very very loud moment for him. Yeah, I'll go back to Peyton Turner. Um, I, I think uh, I think maybe I'm trying to will it to happen because you know I, I'd be excited to see what Peyton Turner looks like if he's on the field consistently and tapping into a really impressive potential. But I saw him put together a series of plays where um, he had the best rip move I've seen him have. He got right past Landon Young. The the play went the other way. I think it might even ended up been a handoff. But it was just such an impressive pass rush move. And then on the very next step, uh, a run stuff. And then like two snaps later, chase, like started inside and chased a play down and ended up making the tackle on another run. It was just like a, these are the kind of things I'd like to see him on the field doing for this defense. Yeah, well, the Saints will get, uh, I believe this is their second day off so far. Yep. Through seven days, they'll get Thursday off. And then we are back out there Friday. But in the meantime... Go check out neworleans.football on YouTube, on the website. These guys always have stuff being pushed out. Ch be sure to look out for updates as well. And if you aren't, if you haven't liked and subscribed our YouTube or podcast channels, be sure to go and do that if you like what we've been doing. And we'll see you guys next time.